Do you want your home to be a welcoming, comfortable, delightful place to be? Me too. Soft lighting glowing through English cottage style pleated lampshades creates just the right ambiance to reach this goal. So today, let's go thrifting, find some vintage lamps, and create our own affordable pleated lampshades. Today, I'm joining a Flippin' Friday DIY collab hosted by Jamie of Board or Bananas and Board or Bananas DIY YouTube channels. You'll find the links to her channels and the playlist below for more inspiring fun. Hello, friend, and welcome back. If you're new, my name is Rachel from the blog StoneCottageHome.com, where we cultivate the art of home. Today, we have a fun adventure. I don't know about you, but I've been seeing these chic printed fabric pleated lampshades all over my Pinterest and Instagram feeds. They come in every size, color, and pattern, adding unique personality and charm wherever they shine. However, they are expensive, ranging from $50 to $350. I think we can beat that. So today, let's go rummage in our local thrift store for lamps, pop into the fabric store for shade fabric, then come home and make our own affordable pleated lampshade. Stick around to the end of the video and I will share with you how we have styled these freshly made over lamps in our own country cottage home decor. Let's go thrifting! And now we enter the wonderful world of discount lamps. In this delightful jumble, lamps abound in every size, shape, and style. The first concern is to find a lamp that will suit your purposes. You will have a general idea for the height and width that you're looking for, but I encourage you to look past the color. That is something that you can change. What you can't change are the lines. Look for specific shapes that really draw your eye that are interesting and unique. This large vintage looking pendant caught my eye, marked $40, but orange tags were half off this day. Wouldn't this be fabulous in a stairwell? Brass, brass, and more brass. A benefit to many of the same kind of lamps is you might find a pair. In this collection, two things caught my eye. The pair of clear lamps, lots of possibilities there, and then this oversized gold metal antique lamp. Those leaves trellising up the side and the marble base. Way too big for anywhere in my house, but fabulous. If you have a narrow entry or hall table, this slender lamp would fit and still give a dramatic presence. Paired with a white drum shade, that mercury glass base would be easy modern glam. Today, I'm on the lookout for two or three small reading lamps and a larger lamp to go in my office. I would love to find something blue and white, vintage, or possibly antique. That heavily textured fern lamp could, with a little paint and distressing, be either French country or modern farmhouse. Once you've found your lamp base, be sure to try on shades while you're in store so you can get the proper balance and style. Wonderful finds, blue and white, vintage, antique. I can hardly wait to get started. Would you ever guess that both blue and white lamps were bought at the antique store? Now to find the right fit and balance in lampshades. Not only do lamp shades come in every style, shape, and size, but they also come with a variety of fittings. A fitting is what joins the shade to the lamp base. Two of my lamps need a butterfly clip, like this one. One of them needs a gimbal, and the other one has a washer fitting which works with a harp. I'm also looking for shades that are lined and have a sturdy frame. Here's a gimbal, and here's a good possibility, ooh, with a butterfly clip. Good frame, white lining, $4. Is it the right size? Yes! 
Now, this is one of my favorite places on earth, and I have yet to bring you here. This is my favorite fabric store. The woman who runs this quilt shop has over 9,000 bolts. So I figured here we were sure to find whatever color or pattern we were looking for for these pleated lampshades. While shopping, I had a picture of all the lamps with me so that I could get an idea of what fabric would go best. I found three fabrics there, and then this one I had in my own stash here at the house, and I think it just goes perfectly with this vintage lamp. I am so excited to see how these turn out. This vintage peach lamp is turning out to be the most difficult to find the right shape of lamp shade. It's very curvy and I'm almost wondering if a narrow drum might look better to offset all those curves. This gorgeous blue and white lamp I believe was an antique. It used to be an oil lamp and has been rewired to be electric leaving the top with a spot to screw in your light bulb but no fittings to support a shade. So this one <laughs> might be a puzzle. Small and round, this sweet little table lamp will be the simplest of all, requiring only a shade with a butterfly clip. Like this one, I measure for my panels, then we remove the exterior fabric and trim while keeping the interior lining intact. Here's a tip for you. If you wanted to repeat this same style, then you could carefully cut the fabric off and use it for a pattern to replace the fabric without pleating it. All right, let's iron our fabric, cut out our panels, and get started. I cut the panel to the measurement of the side of the shade plus one inch for extra to work with top and bottom. Then here you see I've ironed the ends back on both ends so that it will have a neat finish when it gets all the way around. Now we wrap it around both top and bottom right on the strut. That's that metal frame piece that runs from top hoop to bottom hoop. Then put in some pins and begin pleating our fabric. I got about halfway through when I realized that I wasn't going to have quite enough fabric. So I cut another panel and attached it to the tail <laughs> that was hanging off the lamp. Something I would suggest if you want to make a lampshade this size is getting a lighter weight fabric. The cotton is rather thick and a little bulkier than I would like for a shade this small. With the pleating done, now it's time to stitch the pleats down in place along top and bottom. All done, now time to anchor the pleats. Remove the pin, insert the needle near the edge of the pleat using a heavy quilting thread and pull your stitches snugly. Then trim around the inside just under the stitch line to neaten up your edge. For self trim, take your remaining fabric and fold it so that you get a nice diagonal cut. This will give you plenty of stretch to go around the curve. To attach these, put them at right angles to each other and sew from corner to corner diagonally. Then trim off your extra pieces and you have a self-trim piece ready to go. Press your seam open for less bulk and then press the sides down for a tidy edge. To attach the trim, tack it with a piece of glue, then go along underneath and press, holding for a few seconds. Now, I found that applying the self-trim from the front was easier because you could see where you were going and get a straighter edge. Now to join the two pieces. I clip with a little extra fabric so that I can turn under the edge for a tidy finish. Then fold under the edge of that, make sure it fits, tuck in the corner, add some glue, and our pieces are joined. You will see this lamp shining happily in its home at the end of the video. I really can't decide whether I'm most excited about this lamp or the blue oil lamp. This shade swallows the lamp 
with the base being too wide compared to the height. Too big. Let's try a narrower shade. Okay, this looks rather pinched as if the lamp has been squeezed. Kind of awkward. Too small. Now this shade is neither too wide at the base or too narrow at the top or too short from top to bottom. It is a little high though. Let's get a smaller harp and adjust it. Ah, now that drops down just right. For a balanced fit, measure the slant, the top, and the bottom of your shade. The height of your slant indicates the proportion. For a traditional look, this would be one-third of the total height of your lamp from finial to base. For a modern look, this could be as much as 40% of your total height. The top measurement on a steep empire like this one would match the base measurement of your lamp. The bottom measurement should match the distance from the base of your lamp to the bottom of the socket, which is where you screw in your light bulb. For a variation on this shade, I would like to try box pleats. Here is a visual of the fabric that I would love to use. The colors are just fabulous. Let's get a measurement and start removing the exterior fabric. Since this fabric is silk and it coordinates with my fabric, I intend to reuse the trim from top and bottom. Here is an example of pleats going in the same direction. And here, a sample of box pleating, with each one facing the pleat next to it. And on to the pleating! Box pleats all done. Now, to trim the edge, this time I went across twice to get really close so that I could use the silk trim from the original shade. Soon you will see this lamp sitting in my office casting a warm, cozy glow. Now it's time to do the shade for this antique oriental oil lamp. And as I suspected, it was a bit of a puzzle. This shade we found at the thrift store for $1.29. It is the perfect height, width, and shape for this style but it's a little too short. To create a fitting, we add this butterfly clip so the shade is not sitting directly on the bulb. This is better, but it still swallows the neck of the lamp. On Amazon, we found a fitting extender. This gives the height needed to display the original workings of the oil lamp. Next up, cheerful dotted fabric and elegant velvet trim.
would like to thank Jamie from Board or Bananas for generously hosting this collaboration and to remind you to check the playlist below for more DIY inspiration. What a fun day! I am delighted with how our shades turned out. Between the thrift store, the fabric shop, and a little elbow grease, we figured out how to make pleated lamp shades on a budget. Thank you for coming along today as we learned a new way to cultivate the art of home. If you enjoyed your visit, subscribe and join the Stone Cottage Home family. And if you found your visit to be helpful and inspiring, please leave it a thumbs up so I know to plan more visits for you like this one. Until next time, take care.